Yo, what's up, everybody? Mike Red Fox. Thanks for uh, joining my first live stream. Let me know in the chat if audio is good, video is good. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is my first live stream. So appreciate you guys coming out to support. And uh, we'll just hang out, dive into some of what's happening in the market. I want to talk about the LHR, GPUs, and look at some profitability and stuff there. And I don't know, we'll hang out for a little while. So awesome, looks like audio is good. Thanks everyone for coming. This is uh, this is crazy, you guys are making my night and making my week here. So um, yeah, if you got questions for me, throw them in the, in the chat. I got like multiple displays set up. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this. So I uh, appreciate you guys really coming out. Um, still feel like I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, but um, yeah, just uh, happy, happy to be here. So 
you're looking at prices. I know you guys are probably feeling the market lately, and these last few days have been tough. I think we have uh, Mr. Elon to thanks for, for sending us down this dip. A lot of red here. A lot of red. Uh, Bitcoin at 34, 35,000 right now. Ethereum finally made it over 2,000. It was below 2,000 for much of the day today, which like in the grand scheme of things is still pretty good. I remember when it hit 2,000 in this last bull run and I was really, really happy. So um, it's still in a really good place, though. I think we got spoiled seeing it about over 4,000 for a while. So uh, Chancoin slash CC, thanks for being here, buddy. I appreciate that. Now, I don't have a new LHR card yet, but I do want to take a look at some of their profitability on non-Ethereum uh, cryptocurrencies. So we'll, we'll take a look at that because I think, like, without a doubt, I'm going to try to get some. Uh, LHR can't be bypassed yet. Uh, we'll see what the community comes up with. And you guys have heard me talk before. The financial incentive is just huge to be able to bypass um, that hash rate lock. And, and my biggest question really is like, is the lock the same as the 3060? Because when NVIDIA was talking around that 3060, originally it was supposed to be, I think, a hardware lock, a firmware lock, and a driver lock. Like they all would talk to each other. Uh, we figured out pretty quickly that that I don't think was really true at all because that driver development driver came out as we all know and fully unlocked that card. But what I do see, let me pull it up here. So I was on Gigabyte's site and looking at the 3060s specifically, which we know the 3060 was locked from the start. And you can see they have um, two revisions here. So let's just take a look. Look at this Gigabyte GeForce uh, Gaming OC. So they have the 1.0 and then they have this 2.0. And when you go to the 2.0, it says that it has it's the limited hash rate version. So I'm even curious if the 3060 is getting revised and it is going to have some kind of different lock on it than the original 3060 had because I don't think in NVIDIA's blog post it said anything about redoing the 3060 specifically. I think it was just the 3060 Ti. Um, all right, let's catch up on chat here. Uh, scalper's heaven right now. Yeah, no kidding. Let's see what else. Uh, what exchange for Ravencoin? I... Have not exchanged Ravencoin in a long time, but in the past I was using Binance, and I think uh, I'm in the U.S. and I really haven't done much trading um, on Binance since it, the U.S. got shut out and they created their own U.S. version. But uh, they still have Ravencoin, I believe, on the regular U.S. Binance. I just don't know what kind of liquidity it's getting on there. So yeah, this gigabyte is like uh, another revision of the 3060. So I'm really curious. Um, when you, if you guys check out Gamer's Nexus video, he was doing some communication with uh, the board partners on these GPUs, and the actual chip does have a revision um, number on it. It's not the you know, whether it's actually different silicon or not. Who knows? But the stamp on the chip, instead of having like a one, has a two, so that Something's happened in the manufacturing process. I don't know whether it's a different silicon or it's the same silicon, just stamped differently. I mean, we're going to find out within probably the next few weeks, but there is something different going into the PCB on these. So that makes me wonder if the 3060 is getting, uh, you know, a different chip in it as well with a different stamp. So we'll see. We'll see. Man, I gotta get like some music going on the next one of these. It's pretty quiet. Ethereum's dead. Ethereum is Ethereum's not dead. It's gonna be okay. Although we do have, so I would love to know your thoughts on this. Uh, I'm getting really curious here because um, I'm sure you guys know Bits be tripping. He was doing a lot of Excel work, seeing about EIP fifteen fifty nine, and um, if the price of Ethereum were to go down and EIP 1559 kicks in in July, which it will, like what is going to happen? 
because I was on uh, listening into some of those developer calls when they were first discussing EIP 1559. Um, and man, they just, they talked about how it will increase the price of Ethereum. I mean, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but that kind of sat wrong for me for like the developers of a cryptocurrency to be talking about rolling in a feature, knowing and well, hoping that it would force an increase in price of Ethereum. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but one of the models that BBT, Best B Trippin put together uh, was like, if the price drops down, that means it won't be profitable and hash rate's gonna leave and then you're, you have a real security issue of the Ethereum network. So, I mean, I hope the price of Ethereum keeps going up for me and all of your sakes, but if it does go down, I'm really curious what the developers will do if they will still put EIP 1559 in in July or if they will do something uh, to stop it. I would love to know your thoughts. I'm not an expert on EIP 1559, but I, I kept up a lot of uh, quite a bit with it when it was first uh, getting discussed and I joined a few of those developer conversations. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Uh, happy Elon did this to the market. Yeah, it's, I don't know, man. Like, I can't believe how much control he has uh, over the market here. And if you guys have questions just uh, for me, just tag me at Red Fox Crypto in the chat. It comes up really obvious and, and nice for me to be able to see. Um, let's see what else we got. Do I mine directly to Binance? No. Uh, when I was mining Ravencoin, I mined to the Zellcore wallet. If you guys need a wallet for Ravencoin or any other cryptocurrency, almost every other one, uh, check out Zellcore. I've been using that for a long time. Yeah, I saw that LHR not going to affect the Founders Edition um, of NVIDIA GPUs, which I thought was interesting. I think probably... I haven't seen this out there anywhere, so don't quote me on it, but I think probably because they're just going to stop making the founder's editions of, of NVIDIA GPUs, which at least here in the US, the only way to even get those is through Best Buy um, every two weeks. If you, know, if you guys are tracking these things, you probably know, but Best Buy drops GPUs every two weeks. Uh, it's really the best chance to get them. That's where I got a bunch of mine earlier in the year. Um, uh, so let's check this out. Other thing I wanted to look at is let's just say we're going to, you know, we're going to look at this LHR series GPUs. And what I wanted to do was just build out a rig of say, let's just do 630, 60 TIs, which we know are just amazing GPUs for Ethereum. And what I'd like to do here, I'm just going to let it load in the defaults. Uh, even though we know like some of these numbers can be higher, we can get more efficient, what to mine's pretty safe on what it gives you automatically. What I want to see is besides Ethereum, what else would be profitable for the 3060 Ti considering, you know, if these are limited hash rate, uh, light hash rate cards, if I were to buy six of them, what profitability would I get? So you can see right off the bat, Ethereum still grand scheme of things, really profitable. That rig would make almost $30 a day at a 10 cent electric rate. Um, so under that obviously is nice hash. And then I haven't checked this out. I've seen some people talking about ergo, ergo. I'm not sure how to say it. And I certainly can't say that algorithm that it mines, but that would be next profitable. But kind of going down as far as cryptocurrencies that I'm more familiar with and I know have a good amount of liquidity and volume on the exchanges. Next up, you have Conflux on the Octopus algorithm and then Firo in the past known as Zcoin on MTP. And then a little further down is Ravencoin on Kapow. So even if you took Ethereum completely out of the equation, um, I guess I would still consider this more of a um, spec mining, because I, I don't know much about it. If you guys do, like, let me know in the chat, join my Discord, hit me up there. I know a few people have been talking about this cryptocurrency in there. Um, but beyond that, so let's just say Conflux on the Octopus algorithm, you'd still be taking home $13, $14 a day, which in the, in the grand scheme of things, 
thinking about, you know, where crypto mining was just, I don't know, six months ago, eight months ago, 10 months ago, like that is, is still really, really good. And um, I wonder if it'll load it up here. So if we, we click on that, and I think it's got all of our hash rates and everything loaded in. And let's just say, how much are those GPUs even going for now? I don't even know. Let's just say $600 times six. So say you spent $3,600 on those. I mean, your break even still under a year, 264 days. It's really, really good. <laughs> Again, historically, I know that uh, Ethereum would, would break even much sooner, but even if you got these and it didn't get hacked or cracked or unlocked in any way, I mean, that's still really, really good, in my opinion, that is. So I'd love to know from you guys. I know I put a poll out on YouTube a couple days ago, but would you be considering getting some light hash rate GPUs, even in the assumption that they will never get unlocked, would you still consider getting them? Let me know in the chat. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, let's see what else is happening in this chat here. Again, just tag me at Red Fox Crypto if you want me to see anything. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saying on Ethereum, even if uh, G if it gets to a place where GPUs aren't aren't profitable and EIP fifteen fifty nine kicks in, um, ASICs are are all over the Ethereum network. Um, you know, in the developer calls, they gave some percents. Uh, I can't remember what manufacturer it was. If it was Bitmain or one of the other ASIC manufacturers uh, for the Ethereum ASICs, he gave like a ten percent number of the network, which never believe ASIC manufacturers because. We know there's some shady business happening there. They mine with their ASICs before they sell them. Um, you know, they obviously the prices of their ASICs change depending on their profitability. You know, they're they're in it to make money one way or the other. So they are their first customer, not you or me. That's just how they operate their business, and uh, you just have to know that when you look at them and if you want to get involved in them. So. Yeah, even if GPUs leave the network, Ethereum will be dominated by ASICs. Uh, that will continue to secure the network, but it really just comes down to what percent of their network is ASICs. You know, is it enough to continue to secure that network from 51% attacks if all the GPUs left in mind Conflux or Ravencoin or something else? Uh, we'll have to see. July is going to be really interesting depending on the price of, uh, of Ethereum. All right, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, 3090 is not gonna get the light hash rate. Um, I mean, those GPUs are really expensive. What do they get, like 120 mega hash at like over 300 watts for you know, somewhere around $2,000? I still haven't got my hands on one. I really want one. I really want the EVGA for the win three one. And I think that's a little under two grand and I'm really trying to get one because it's, uh, is it the only, th yeah, it's the only 30 series GPU I don't have. And so I can't do a hash rate video on it. I, I just, I really want one. So I'm hoping to get one. I'm really hoping to get one soon. So 3090. Uh, let's see. Ben, man, you got 6 3070s, 8 3060 Ti's. Nice, dude. And 2 3080s. Should I stay on Ethereum? Right now, yeah, Ethereum's still the place to be. So you want to uh, stay on there, in my opinion, but... Let's see what else we got. Potential, few rumors, potential 3090 Ti. That would be insane. So I saw the uh, 3070 Ti. I think I actually have it up here on video cards. There's a 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti rumor uh, that NVIDIA is going to announce them on May 31st. So uh, eight days from right now, they're apparently going to do a keynote and talk about these models. And from what I remember reading is, I guess we'll look down at some specs here. The 3080 Ti is supposed to be like make more sense for gaming than the 3090. So 3090 was just uh, a little overkill. Man, look at that original MSRP for that 3090, 1499. Yeah, man, times have changed. Um, I'm trying to remember what the differences are. Yeah, memory, that's the big one. So it's got half the memory, 12 gigabytes versus 24. 
which at least to my knowledge, the 24 gigabytes was just complete overkill. So if you can release a model that still performs as far as like, you know, their, their market gaming just as well, but can be cheaper because you're cutting down on the memory because the rest of the specs are pretty close, then yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm really curious what that one is going to be priced at. The one that I'm confused about is the 3070 Ti. I don't know what, like where this card fits here. I guess it's got more CUDA cores and it's got the same, well, okay, so it's got different memory than the 3070. So we'll see what happens with that one. But yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter because they're not going to be able to buy them. It's going to be impossible. So they can just keep releasing GPUs for hey, one a month, you know, as long as they want. But you can't buy them. So I guess it really doesn't matter what they do, to be honest. Um, let's check out uh, the chat here. Uh, let's see what else you guys are talking about. Um, also, like with all of this, you know, I've been thinking a little bit more about the uh, AMD cards, which, you know, for this generation, AMD just has not been favorable for mining. Uh, they limited the, I guess it was the memory bus, whether or not they did that on purpose or not, you know, it's all speculative. I'm sure they did because the 5700 series was pretty good for mining. And so the 6000 series uh, came out and they have the memory bandwidth think it is memory bandwidth on those gpus uh which don't just don't make them as good but even so like if the market if again if these gpus don't get unlocked and they have this light hash rate and you know months and months go on and we can't find an unlock for them then like the 6700 xt looks pretty good on ethereum but then again amd gpus are really only good on Ethereum, and I haven't tested uh, this 6700 XT I have on anything else, but if Ethereum, you know, when they do EIP 1559 and they go prove the stake eventually, who knows when that is, um, then AMD's, NVIDIA can pivot a lot easier than AMD cards can, uh, at least in my opinion and in my experience. So, you know, I think the crypto market will sink further once Ethereum goes proof of stake. Um, I don't know. Proof of stake is really interesting to me because... I mean, you like, you have to have 32 Ethereum to do proof of stake. I know uh, you can join like pools uh, to stake smaller amounts. And, you know, I'm doing Coinbase's um, staking right now with, you know, less than 32 Ethereum. So that's still totally possible. Uh, but it, in a way, like that 32 Ethereum staking, it just, I don't know, it feels like it makes the rich richer, you know, because you got to have a, you gotta have a lot of Ethereum, and that's a lot of USD value in order to stake. And uh, there's just something really to be said about having just a GPU and you can participate. You can have, right now, you can have like a 1650 that you paid, you know, probably under $200 for, you know, uh, six months to a year ago. And you could be mining Ethereum with that right now, you know, in your PC at home, that was super cheap to get involved, something that you just had. And that's, that's wonderful. But listen, Ethereum was really transparent up front. Um, they were always going to go prove a stake. So like we got to accept that as miners. We don't have to accept EIP 1559 because that was something that they just came up with later on. But they always were going to go proof of stake. So we can't fault them on that. Um, proof of work was to get them started. We supported the heck out of Ethereum. We continue to do that. And proof of stake was always in the cards. So we'll have to take it as it comes. Um, yeah, uh, after EIP go seven, after EIP 1559 and, uh, the LHR cards, those two factors alone more than likely push the next miners choice coin through the roof. Yeah. You know, and, um, again, Bisbee Trippin was talking around this. I think Raven coin was like the favorite because of how much, uh, is in each block reward that it would be able to take you know, of all the cryptocurrencies at the time when he was doing doing all this research um, on it, of all of all of them at the time, Ravencoin was in the best position to take all of the hash rate of the network because of its block reward. But it would, I mean, drive a price increase like crazy of Ravencoin to continue to be profitable. So, 
that's uh that's the one i keep looking at when all this goes down is uh is ravencoin um i'd like to see a little more development on that network again i'm not like an expert on it i don't stay as in tune as i once did really since this bull market hit ethereum has been where i put my, all my attention and it just became you know a business yeah at this point because why mine anything else but ethereum when that's when you're going to be raking in the most amount of income whereas in the past you know this is this is good insight you know for anybody who's maybe new to mining um who hasn't been in it you know during the the bear markets you know in the past you really do a lot of speculative mining because i mean there was years where ethereum was not the most profitable coin to mine so you know you sit there and you learn about other projects and you research other projects and you're ready for project launches, I mean, when Ravencoin launched, I remember like that first block being mined and being on that network with my 1070 TIs. Uh, when Grin launched, being there on the network for block one, uh, and I, you know, I could go on for uh, Zell Cash, otherwise I think known as Flux now. Again, day one, I think I only had like three GPUs at the time, uh, but being on that network day one. So, you know, you really get involved because you're chasing some type of profit, you're chasing some speculation, uh, you're getting to learn all these different cryptocurrencies. And then once Ethereum just takes off, at least for me, I kind of stopped paying attention to what else is out there and just mine as a business at that point and make sure that I'm paying off my GPUs. Um, all right, let's check in the chat. Sorry, guys, let's see what else you are talking about. Travelers travels four fifty seven RXTs, man. Nice. I also have four, and well, I have five, but one of them doesn't work, and I just haven't had the time to take it apart and figure out what's going on with it. Uh, so that's sad. It just sits on display. Yeah, my thirty eighty two. Um, it's still. Uh, if you guys saw my video and saw those thermal pads, it's still uh, thermal throttling. So I got to replace the stock pads and do a part two on that video. So uh, I want to get that thing up to 100 plus mega hash. The China, uh, Yu Jia, how will the China's crypto crackdown affect the rest of the world mining? Listen, I don't think it's going to do much of anything at all. Somebody posted something online the other day about all the things that China has banned. And I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, that's a, a part of the world where, a lot of innovation happens. So as far as them banning uh, crypto or whatever they're doing right now, like that's disappointing, but um, it's not going to stop the innovation that's happening in the space. I really, I really don't think it is. But when you think about, in my opinion, again, at least where the US is compared to the rest of the world, as far as adopting the innovation of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all of that, like I feel like we're far behind. I'm glad that there's been things that have happened in the past few years, like us putting out the IRS, putting out something along, you know, taxes gives it as much as you hate to pay taxes on this stuff. It gave it some validity. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, a few other things that the government's gotten involved on that have not stopped cryptocurrency. It's just regulated cryptocurrency. So personally, I see that as a positive because there is no stop. There is no ban like whatever China is doing uh, right now. Uh, Go seven. Yeah, those 32 Ethereum at the height was worth 120K. So that's, man, just to get involved in proof of stake, that is a chunk of change. You definitely can't be doing that if you're uh, just doing this with your gaming PC in your bedroom at your parents' house. You're not going to be staking Ethereum. Uh, let's see. What else we got there? Uh, Mark, what about Ethereum Classic? I, I've honestly, I've never mined Ethereum Classic. I know that there's a lot of crypto YouTubers, especially uh, over the last few years that have mined Ethereum Classic and supported that project. But I just like, from an optics point of view, for somebody that's jumping into cryptocurrency for the first time, uh, whether they're an investor or a miner, why, like, what would draw them to Ethereum Classic is what I always thought. And that's what I felt. And you could argue, and if you guys don't know this, like, Ethereum Classic is the true Ethereum chain because the DAO hacked happened years ago and Ethereum decided to roll 
back its blockchain, which is a big no-no because code is law. Uh, and Ethereum rolled back its blockchain and the network split and Ethereum Classic and Ethereum you know, coexisted uh, going forward. But you know, obviously Ethereum has a lot more development that's happening on it. It's being used a lot more. So Ethereum Classic was hacked, I think three times. There was a 51% attack that happened within the last year or so. I thought a rebrand would do them well, you know, just change their name and change their image and get some development happening and maybe they could do something, but I don't know. It's it's not a project I'm interested in. I've never minded a single day on any GPU. Yeah, yeah, no uh, no development happening there. Uh, Travelers Travel is avoiding my eight GPU rack from China for 16 days already, still in China. Listen, I got really, I stopped buying a, uh, I guess Vetter frames is what I'll use. I stopped buying them because uh, the prices got ridiculous. And then I saw some drop to around $100. I posted them in my Discord too. There's a six frame GPU frame and an eight GPU frame. So I bought like five of them just to have them because I, I ran out. And uh, if I could get more GPUs, time to build some more frames. Uh, yeah, Beam, uh, Chancoin. Yeah, Beam too. I was, I was there for that one too. That was... But both uh, Beam and Green, I think, launched just around the same time. And I've definitely got a bag of both of those I still hold on to, and I wish I sold them. Uh, I think Grin was, like, like was worth a lot of, at launch. So, yeah. Uh, Alter Component, yo, what's up, buddy? Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. You've been here since day one, so... Uh, I love your content, but if you guys aren't uh, subbed yet to Alter Component, go check him out. He's linked in my description below. He posts uh, some great stuff. He did some recent unboxings of the GPUs he's bringing in, so go check him out on YouTube. Uh, what else we got going on? Mining Monero. Uh, you, Joe, what's your opinion on Mining Monero? Uh, I mine Monero on my 3900X that I have in this PC uh, right now. So I've been mining Monero since I bought that that uh, CPU and built this. I have a mini ITX build. And um, so I mined almost two Monero now since then, which I don't even know what Monero is worth right now. I guess I can check it out. Uh, XMR is worth... $222. So, I mean, that CPU's paid itself off. So, that's cool. So, yeah. Um, and I was just mining it pretty conservatively. Nothing too crazy in there. All right. What else should we check out? Uh, so, yeah. We got those uh, light hash rates coming soon. So, end of May or second half of May. So, I mean, right now is when we'll be seeing these GPUs start dropping. And I don't know, let's see if they have any listed for the other 30 series. Let's just check the 3070s. Do they have any revision models here? What's going on here? No, so I don't have them up for the 3070s yet. This is still just 1.0 version. So we'll have to see uh, what else comes out. So they only have the 3060s that I saw so far. And 3080s, yeah, still version one. So nothing new on that. The other thing, you know, again, Gamers Nexus said, um, he was talking to some board partners, is that I guess as long as supply exists, both the non-LHR, the regular versions of the chips will be made alongside the LHR versions of the chips. So I guess we'll, we'll see if that continues to be true. Uh, let's check out. EVGA, I wonder if they have anything up yet. By the way, still on the, the, the queue for both the 3060 Ti, 3070, I think 3080 for uh, for EVGA. Probably just going to wait forever at this point. I wonder if they have any 3060s as light hash rate versions yet. Uh, what else you guys got going on in the chat? Thanks again, everybody, for stopping by. I don't know how long I'm going to go for. It's my first live stream ever going about 36 minutes here so man really having fun so thanks for being here uh let's see so they still only have the two 3060s 
I don't know if they're going to do like a version two like Gigabyte's doing or if they'll just, it'll be the same thing. I also don't know like if manufacturers, I guess they're going to change SKUs because NVIDIA said they have to put it on the box uh, and identify it as a, a light hash rate card in some way. So I guess we'll see uh, what they all come up with, all the board partners here. Uh, go seven thoughts on 300 giga hash falling off the hash rate in the last two days. Uh, well, let's check it out. Let's go over to EtherScan. I think they got the hash rate. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How do I do time periods? I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Two miners. Two miners, Ethereum, network hash rate. That's just two month. Yeah, I mean, we're climbing 650 terahash almost. Yeah, I mean, it's coming down from its peak here. Not much, but I wonder if some people are moving on to mine some other things. Since uh, Ethereum's price went down, I don't think anybody's turning off their rigs yet. I can't even imagine. Actually, let's check it out. So what um, electricity costs would you have to have for this not to be profitable? It'd probably have to be crazy high. Yeah, okay. No, I mean, <laughs> 30 cents. Nobody's paying 30. I mean, I guess California is probably paying 30 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, could you pay 90 cents kilowatt hour? Yeah, you're still profitable. You could be paying ridiculous electricity rates. You're still profitable. Nobody's turning their rigs off. They might just be moving to some other cryptocurrencies, but I have no idea. Uh, huge job. What kind of cooling do you have for my CPU? It's air cooled. It's in a mini ITX, uh, Leon Lee, I think TU 150. So it's, uh, be quiet. I think it's like a, I can't remember what it's called. Dark rock. Pro 4, something like that. Um, tower cooler. Does a nice job. I wasn't really sure how it would do. I've only done liquid cooling in the past. Uh, let's see. What else? What else we got in the chat here? 30, oh, Philippines, 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Bay Area, California, 30 cents, you poor souls. That is so... I mean, it's great right now, but that's that's tough. Listen, I pay... Uh, I think right now 13 cents per kilowatt hour in the east coast of the U.S. And that is not a great electricity rate. That was really tough um, during the bear market, especially since my electric went up a little bit. I used to pay less. It used to be like 11 cents and then it went up. And then I also pay seasonal. So I have to check what my summer rate is going to be. I think it goes up to like 15 cents a kilowatt hour. And I really haven't done any shopping. I can shop around for cheaper electric rates. Um, but I haven't done that because it's been like not a big deal right now because profits are so good. Yeah, uh, these headphones are the um, 770s. Ohm version. Uh, I think they're the lesser ones, so I don't need something special to drive it. I've had these for a long time. I make music. Uh, that's what I did before mining. <laughs> I'm a musician, so I make music. So these are what I used to use in the studio. And uh, fun fact, all the music you guys hear and all my videos I made. So sometimes it takes me a little longer to put something out because I make uh, music for the end or intros or anything that plays underneath. Uh, I make all that music because uh, it's music's important to me and I want it to be there and I want it to be mine, not something I just picked that was copyright free. Never moved to Cali. Uh, once upon a time, I really wanted to. 11 cents kilowatt hour, five cents. Man, can I come live with you? That sounds great. Play that RTX song in the background. I'm glad you, I'm glad you like that one. That one was fun to make. Red Fox mixtape went. That's one of my buddies says that uh, watches my videos. He says, you got to you gotta put like a Red Fox music stream up or something. Maybe I'll do something like that. Uh, Mrs. Red Fox, thanks for being here. Uh, what else should we look at? I don't know. I'll just keep talking with you guys. <laughs> How many 30 series cards should you get? 
I mean, for me, as many as I can, I think I'm gonna buy another pre-built. Let's check that out. That's buy. Uh, so I had, let's see. So the things that I look at, I was looking at the cyber power PC that I have one of that I think I'm gonna keep. Uh, it's probably this one. You know what the other thing too, I've been checking out and I haven't pulled the trigger yet is um, if you pay attention enough, uh, cyber power PC has instant ship systems. And right now, obviously this is, this is garbage. Don't buy this <laughs> GT 1030 on it with two, two gigabytes of RAM. I don't know what you're doing with this computer. Um, but they posted a 3060 Ti instant ship and instant ship is like within a couple days. Um, <laughs> they posted that on here and they posted a 3080 on here too. Uh, and I, I hesitate. I should have pulled the trigger on it because they're really not a bad value. In my opinion, you're getting the GPU for pretty close to MSRP. Uh, and if you want to flip the rest of it, you can certainly do that. I mean, you know, we haven't checked, I haven't checked out eBay in a while, but, um, let's see. I wonder if people are selling them without uh, GPU. And this is one, what they put in here. It's pretty much, I think it's the same thing. 3700x 16 gigs that's a that's the wrong one that's 1660 super um so they just put a gt 730 in this thing that definitely came with a 3070 to begin with and they're selling it for 740 dollars and six of them already sold so you can still flip those on ebay i know ebay takes fees and all that stuff but you can still flip these uh pre on ebay pretty easily it looks like so yeah, you can check out uh, CyberPower PC for their instant ships. Uh, you can check out Best Buy uh, has like a 3080 and a 3070 that they do uh, pre builds on that posts, I don't know, pretty regularly, every couple of days or so, they're doing like restocks on them. Uh, hey, Arcat, thanks, man. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for, uh, thanks for saying thank you. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Uh, ben Man, Mrs. Red Fox, she's the wife. She's the number one fan supporting me, so she's a real person. <laughs> Bob, Bob Rams, uh, you bought Cyber Power Omen and Asus pre -built. Yeah, man, the Asus is garbage compared to the Cyber Power PC. I really like the Cyber Power PC. Um, I think it's uh, pretty quality. I mean, it's not as good as something you can build yourself, but honestly, it's, it's not too bad. Especially compare that Asus. That thing is it's got green RAM. Yeah. Uh go seven. You picked up uh two thirty seventies from Micro Center. Nice dude. I still haven't made a trip. My micro center is like an hour and a half away, so I just I don't want to chance it. I wish I had one closer, but I do not. Uh, let's see what else you guys talking about here and maybe something else we can look into. <laughs> uh, here's a good question. Fred, is it better to build a uh, lower hash rate rig, 1660s, 1080s, 580s, uh, or go for higher hash rate cards? Uh, it's, uh, for example, the 30 series. It's a good question, buddy. Um, what I look at is efficiency. And that is how much power does this GPU need to use that you know you have to pay for with your electricity versus how much hash rate I'm getting out of it. So looking at your list there, I mean the 580s and 1080s are not efficient cards nowadays. Um, the 580 was a great GPU for mining Ethereum maybe four or five years ago. The 1080 was never really good at Ethereum um, the 1660 TIs and supers were, were great. The best at Ethereum when they came out and then the 5700s were a little bit better. And then the 30 series just mopped the floor with, with all of them. So, you know, a couple of things I think about for me, I go with efficiency. Number one, you know, um, that, that for me has worked out the best because when profitability gets really low, 
efficiency is what saves you because you got to be paying out of pocket for electricity. The argument on the other side is density. Uh, so while the 3060 Ti might be more efficient, it takes almost two of those to do the hash rate of a 3080 and 3080 is less efficient, but that's one GPU to maintain versus two. So that's another thing to consider is, you know, what do you, what do you, what's your goal, right? Is your goal to have a really dense rig? Do you want maybe six GPUs, six 3080s on a frame? Or do you want 12 GPUs, you know, 12 3060 Ti's, which maybe now you got to do two motherboards, you know, multiple power supplies, two CPUs, multi, two, uh, two uh, RAM sticks. And, you know, maybe the costs add up a little bit there. And then, you know, 12 GPUs versus six GPUs, maintenance, you know, you can go into that argument as well. But for me, it always comes down to efficiency and uh, what mega hash will it do versus the power that it's using. And that has worked out in my favor. If I paid at two cents per kilowatt hour, my electric might be a different story. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, man. CPU mining put uh if you got a good CPU, uh, mellow, throw it on, throw it on Monero or Verus coin is another, uh, mineable, uh, crypto on a CPU. I mined that a long time ago. Uh, and I mined it on FPGA for a while, and then they changed their algorithm. And I think they're just CPU now, but Verus is a, is a good project, in my opinion. Try, dude, <laughs> you drive three, but Brams, you drive three hours to Micro Center. Woo, I hope you know they got GPUs before you start uh, start that trip. Man. Woo, I think I really got to sell some, ten, um, you know, let's look at this, 1070 Ti's, because I'm getting nervous. I didn't sell my 1070 Ti's yet. And I really should have. And I'm going to get stuck with these things when we go into a bull uh, bear market. And I'm going to be really sad about it. And everybody's going to tell me, I told you so. What just happened here? 1070 ties. That's what? <laughs> what? Uh, let's go to some sold listings. Sold items. Uh, 1070 ties. 600 bucks, $555. All right, so up, up $500. I have two of these SCs. This is the one, yeah, I think this is the one I fixed. I have, uh, well, I fixed the Oris, so I mean, $550. I have a For the Win 2 that I got. I remember I got that card on Amazon Warehouse like 300 bucks so i mean all of uh all, it's crazy those 1070 ti's are selling for the price i bought them for you know three and a half four years ago uh and some of them are selling for more than i bought them for three years ago uh i really don't want to get caught with holding on to those but i just i gotta i gotta i gotta sell them i gotta sell them i just don't want to Uh, let's see. If you did all the music, did you make the logo too? Brian Mahayich, what's up, bud? Uh, I did. I did make the logo. I drew it on my iPad and uh, made the intro and, and all that and some Adobe software I had to learn. Uh, then, man, rigs are circumstantial. Most people go with efficiency, but lots do a hybrid of both uh, or just pure density. Think about your individual needs, power limitations, 100% right, man. And like right now, just, I mean, get what you can, in my opinion, um, even though the market is uh, coming down a little bit, right? Ethereum's still over $2,000, still pretty profitable. So, I mean, we're definitely in the get what you can. Don't be picky. Joseph, am I familiar with Ergo? I still don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm not. I guess I got to look into it because people are chatting about it, which means I'm probably too late to it already. Uh, uh, let's see. You sandwiched 30 minutes between two micro centers. Man, you are, you are a lucky, lucky man. You've, for Brams, you've never not gotten a GPU going to micro center. I want to send some my way. I haven't gotten a new GPU in a while. I think the last one was, uh, I had the 3060 that I got from Zotac on their store. And then the 3070 that I got from that cyber power PC pre-built. 
and Zotac store is doing, I guess they're doing the, they were doing the queue system and then they stopped apparently last drop and didn't do the queue system. So it was back to the same open, you know, 300 tabs have the PayPal express links going. Um, if you need help with any of that stuff, by the way, join my discord. I'll help you out. There's like, um, like a list of steps you have to follow to hit Zotac store. Uh, it's super frustrating, but it's possible. It's, it's possible, but it's, it's frustrating. Uh, but then they moved to the queue system and then I found out, uh, I never tried it, but there is apparently an app that you can use that bypasses the type of queue system they were using. And, uh, so I don't know, you know, cat and mouse game. Uh, let's see what else, uh, how much mega hash do I have? I have, uh, two giga hash right now, which is, uh, which is big for me. So I think I'm up to, uh, 48, 49, 50 GPUs, something like that. Rocking my basement, you know, right below me right now. It was getting real hot in here. And uh, Mrs. Red Fox was not too happy. So uh, if you guys saw my, my previous videos, got everything in a grow tent going and venting to the outside. But uh, GPUs are getting a little toasty in there. There's some, uh, some above 70 now because we had some hot days. And I have the basement window open because I don't want it. You know, I don't have... Um, the intake for the grow tent is pulling from the basement. It's not pulling from outside, like would be ideal. I just haven't want to, haven't had to want to deal with it because then I got to filter the intake. So I'm not pulling in like pollen and insects and like that would be disgusting all over my pretty GPUs. So it's just uh, pulling in basement air and I have the basement window open because it'll, it'll pull from there first. If I close that, it'll pull from the house and it'll find ways to pull air my air conditioning into the basement and through the tent. And uh, you can actually feel this. If I had the basement door closed, there's like a gap underneath like that. And there'll be a breeze that's coming in from upstairs down into the basement because that um, ventilation fan, the inline fan is, is pulling so much air from anywhere it can. So it winds up taking my, my air conditioned air. So I have the basement window open. Where I live, it's been like 90 degrees. So it's been pulling you know 90 degree Fahrenheit into the tent. So the tent temperatures were up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. And so the GPUs, uh, some of them were getting to like 74 degrees Celsius, which some of you guys are cringing right now because who wants to run their GPUs that hot? So I bought another uh, inline fan and more ducting. And I think I'm gonna do two exhausts now. That'll be a project for another day. But yeah, that's, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll do a video on it, but yeah, they're getting a little too toasty for me. And a lot of people have said, why don't you just get like a portable air conditioned unit and just, you see some people on YouTube have like their intake duct attached to the portable air conditioner. And uh, it's just pulling that cool air into the tent. But then like, I gotta be paying, how many watts is that thing gonna pull? You know, and right now, again, it probably doesn't matter. I'm always thinking bear market, bear market, bear market, bear market. I don't want that overhead. I don't want it. So I'm missing winter a little bit because those GPUs got to heat my house. And that was really cool. Got to use the energy they were producing and uh, not pay, you know, the, the gas costs to run my furnace. So all good. Uh, let's see. Have I had any luck with bots yet? No. Uh, midget monkey. I have not had any luck with bots yet. So I'm currently, you guys can probably see it down here, currently running Stellar. Um, and I'm going to do a video on this as well. The uh, After I did my how to buy GPUs video, the owner of Stellar reached out to me, uh, full transparent, transparency. He provided me a free copy so that um, I could do uh, a video on it. And so I've been running it for, I guess, like two, three weeks. And you can see right now you're looking at Amazon and these are all the SKUs it's uh, monitoring for Amazon. And then you can see uh, that it's waiting for an alert right here. And um, essentially the way Stellar works is that on their server, they have these GPU SKUs monitored. And once an item becomes in stock, it will send in a, that notification to their app, which you see on my screen here then that will attempt to start the add to cart and checkout process. So there's you know multi steps to this. Uh, so GPU comes in stock, everybody that is 
in every bot, whether it's Stellar, uh, Eastock, um, Viper, Snellbot, Nova, they all get this alert. And all these bots attempt to check out this GPU. You know, if there's only a couple in stock, you're, it's high competition. If there's you know, a lot in stock, you may have a chance. Um, and then you can see this one down here, uh, waiting for monitor update, placing order. So that, that took a step to attempt to buy it. It came in stock, but it didn't get anywhere past just trying to place the order. Um, after it does that, it will go to the cart and then it will say, you know, attempting to check out and then it'll sit there. And ultimately, you know, you want it to go all the way to check out so you can pay for it. And then you might have to fight with Amazon who might cancel your order or ban your account because they think you're a bot or they think that, uh, you know, an account got hacked or something. So listen, it's not easy. It's a process. You have to keep up with it. I'm going to do a video on it, but I really thought that this would be like a set it and forget it. It is not. It is a cat and mouse game. I give a ton of credit to the developer Thermal of Stellar because he is putting up updates every couple days. If Amazon changes something, Best Buy changes something. He figures out what they change, figures out our way around it and puts an update out. But that's what I mean. Like I'm updating this app probably daily, multiple times a day with uh, things they put out. So no luck yet. Best Buy seems to be the one that you'll have the most luck with. It was broken for last long, uh, Best Buy drop, but this has a way to bypass the queue that Best Buy uses for GPU drops. So, I mean, listen, this uh, software is used by scalpers. Kind of feel like I'm hanging with the bad guys a little bit, uh, but there's some miners too that are using this um, to... Uh, you know, just get GPUs from themselves, but this is, this is, this is how you got to compete. So no luck yet. I'll do a video on it soon. Do a review on it. Um, first impressions are, I wish I bought it, had gotten a GPU by now, but I'm really impressed with how often it gets updated. And, um, there's people that, that have success with it. It's just not me yet. So we'll, uh, cross your fingers for me. I'll let you know. Uh, let's see what else, uh, you guys chatting about. Uh, you definitely have the cleanest setup I've seen. Maybe not as good as mine, though. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Go7. I'm trying, man. It took me a long time to redo that basement. Fair Game. Yeah, that's another bot. Um, that one's a free one. So Fair Game essentially just automates the Amazon checkout process. It's just a script that runs and essentially clicks the buttons for you on the screen. It, people have success with it, but it is really rare. It seems like that was a good bot to use uh, months and months ago before all the paid bots really got a hold of everything. Yeah, last two weeks have been really dry on Amazon. I got to think that the uh, SKUs are, are maybe changing over to the new light hash rate ones. Um, and just, uh, I probably won't go too much longer here, guys, but uh, tag me at Red Fox Crypto if you have any questions in the chat. Makes it real nice and easy for me to see. Uh, Joseph, in your opinion, what similarities and differences are there this cycle compared to 2017? Uh, I'll give you from miners per a miner's perspective is that um, GPUs are way harder to get this time than last time. They were hard and you paid some increased prices, but you could use like normal, like now in stock, uh, .com or .net or whatever it is, alerts to score GPUs. I remember like, like jumping up and down because I got an alert and scored a 1070 Ti off Newegg for like $600. Uh, but it was, it was not this hard. So the silicon shortage and all the stuff happening in the world has made it super difficult um, to get GPUs. Um, as far as, the market goes, I mean, it felt, if I could be wrong on all this and you know, there's charts to look at all this information, but it almost feels like this is uh, like the last bull run was, was shorter compared to this one. Um, but that could be cause I got in like, you know, maybe midway through it or near the top of it. But it feels like this one's been going on, you know, much longer now. I mean, we've been, what, since I think, you know, November, December. So we're like six months uh, into this one and it's still fun. It's still exciting, even though we're looking at some red now. 
Um, but you know, some things that looking ahead, if we go into another bear, when we go into another bear, with whether it's now or later, that's the tough time. You, you guys can watch my video on it, but that's the tough time. Uh, that's the time to buy stuff, though. I'm I'm super stoked that I bought GPUs during that time. I wish I bought more, but. I guess like the little things, all the mining parts, motherboards, frames, CPUs, like all that stuff was dirt, dirt cheap. And so what it really comes down to for you is, um, is this something that's going to shake you out? Maybe it will because of your electricity rate. You know, the, the, over the last three years, the phrase you saw online all the time and there was people making YouTube videos on it and all that was GPU mining is dead. Yet here we are, very much alive and still kicking. And I just, no matter what happens with Ethereum, my opinion, GPU mining will find a way. It's uh, it's it's really, really good. I mean, like I said earlier in the stream, like anybody can participate. You got a GPU in your gaming PC, you can participate. And I believe a project will be in the forefront to support just that mentality. I mean, at least that's my hope. Uh, Black Bear Crypto, what do you think about Chia hard drive mining? Honestly, man, I just, I haven't had the time to look into it yet. I like started, I got confused, and then I just, I just went and did something else. It's on my, it's on my list of things to do. Do you think, uh, Benny, do you think the recent price decline will lead to a delay of EIP 1559? I talked about that earlier, man. I don't know. Like, they got to be really thinking about that because, um, it really depends on like the security of the network depends on the price being high so that it's still profitable to mine. If another cryptocurrency becomes profitable to mine, miners will leave because miners have no allegiance to Ethereum. We provide a service to the network to secure the network. We owe Ethereum nothing. So if that price drops, Raven keeps dropping. Ravencoin becomes better to mine. Flux becomes better to the mine. Beam becomes better than mine. Any of these other proof of work projects become better than mine. You better move over to that project no matter what uh, because you owe Ethereum nothing. They, we are, think about that, this as a business. Um, am I going to buy light hash rate cards? Yeah, definitely. I'm hoping that it increases supply so I, I can actually get some. But yeah, I want to buy some. Um, good question, Shresh. If all GPU brands come at same price, top three picks. Good question, man. Uh, EVGA, number one. EVGA is just top notch. Love the build quality on them. I've had to RMA probably one or two uh, of their GPUs. One because of my fault. Two, I think because... Actually, maybe just one. Just the one because it was my fault and I plugged the... Uh, that's the day that I learned that power supply power connectors are not interchangeable across power supply brands. And I'll leave it at that. So I fried that 1070 Ti uh, and their RMA process is just, is just the best. Um, so EVGA is number one. After that, man, I have a lot of gigabyte cards. I have a lot of gigabyte cards, but I don't know if that would be number two. Um, probably, I'll go AMD, probably Sapphire on AMD side, uh, especially those nitros, those cards are sick. So those, uh, those are, those are just great cards, man. They have great cooling on them. I really like those cards. What else do I have? Man, I have a lot of gigabytes. Oh, oh, I'll say Asus, the Strix, Strix cards, especially these 30 series cards. They're amazing. So I would say if I'll just say 30 series cards, uh, EVGA number one, and then Asus Strix cards are number two. Those things look awesome. And then I guess Gigabyte, cause I have a bunch of them, even though like, I don't love them. Uh, let's see. Chump change. What's up, dude. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for the uh, inspiration on those racks that I have in my basement. Saw them, saw those in your video and that, uh, that red is just beautiful. So thanks for the inspo. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, follow up to that. If uh, Joseph, if the bear market intensifies, what's the chance fickle miners flood the market with hardware, sentiments and jump ship or hold tight? It'll absolutely happen. If this price, let's hope it doesn't. But uh, you know, we're gonna hit a bear market at some point. At some point, but yeah, uh, the market will get flooded with hardware, and it will be really nice to buy some of that hardware for really, really cheap. 
but you're going to be fighting yourself because you're going to be going, well, I could buy this GPU for really cheap, but it also makes almost no money. You just got to think long-term. You got to take that risk. You got to make that call for yourself. Uh, Justin, are you going to still going to buy more GPUs, uh, even if it's, uh, if it's not the light hash edition? Yeah, I'm trying to get more GPUs, uh, anything I can get, you know, I think, I think long-term, um, I've said this, you know, multiple times, but I think years and it's, uh, the thing that's helped me the most is I don't think about getting rich quick, right? Like I don't think about making the quick buck. I think about years, um, you know, and that that's worked for me now, like thinking three years, four years, you know, ahead of time, what position do I want to be in then? Obviously, there'll be new generations of GPUs that come out over time as well. But um, yeah, definitely trying to get more GPUs. I'm not not shaking off uh, this yet. These all this red is not scaring me because I'm in this for the long haul. I believe in cryptocurrency. I believe it will change the world. I believe in GPU mining. It's a ton of fun. Um, I love it. I can't believe that uh, life worked out in a way where I just kind of fell into this, honestly. Go seven top cards, FE and EVGA are tied than ASUS for sure. Yeah, good list, man. Those Founders Edition cards are pretty nice. Much better than any of the previous ones, in my opinion. Uh, uh, what else? ABMNS Production. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for supporting me since uh, day one. I appreciate you watching my videos, commenting on every one, even when sometimes we disagree. Still love having you around, buddy. Thanks for uh, Thanks for showing up. Uh, yeah, Asus KO is, <laughs> that is an ugly card. I can't believe the same company makes a Strix that makes that. I really, nonsense, dude. 3084 to win three ultra. I really want that card. 103 mega hash, 213 watts. That is sick. That is amazing results, dude. Enjoy that card. That is awesome. Can't wait to buy a mining motherboard for $50 again. Yeah, dude, I bought, um, five brand new of the ASRock uh, H110 Pro BTC boards, the 13 GPU boards, five of them, $30 each on eBay. Brand new. You could like buy a lot. Um, you could buy like, you know how eBay does? Buy one, pay this much, buy five, pay this much. I bought five and paid under $30 for them. Did the same thing with uh, G3930s, CPUs. So yeah. That's uh, that's the time. It's so it's so cheap. I think like what what is a Azrock H110 going for right now? I think four hundred dollars. It's crazy. Yeah. Turn on monetization. You want super chat? Yeah, dude. I don't know what I'm doing. You're gonna have to help me out. You you live stream a lot more than me. Pocket change. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for the sub. Do, uh, do a little bit longer. It's been a little over an hour. Appreciate all you guys showing up and being here. First live stream ever. This is a lot of fun. Uh, I'll do some more of these. Kind of ran out of stuff to talk about because I wasn't really prepared. But i um, happy to just talk with you guys in chat. And we can look at these, uh, these prices here. I have a question for you guys. What was the first GPU that you've ever mined on? Throw it up in chat. I want to see what you guys say. I've heard about this one too, Tent. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Uh, let's have some depressing fun here. Let's see what a 3070 is going for on eBay right now. Oh my God. Let's look at some. Yeah, these are the sold ones. This is the... This is, so... Gamers versus miners, right? Gamers and miners versus scalpers. Look at this. $1,400. People are buying this. 20 bids. So that's the thing with uh, the bots, too. Like I was sharing with you guys, I'm using Stellar. Like People are getting the GPUs at MSRP and then flipping them and making you know, a ton of money off of them. So that's there's a market for the scalpers, and that's a lot of people that are making money doing that. So it's just not the miners buying the GPUs, although you can argue that's probably maybe the miners buying all these at these uh, crazy prices. I don't know. Go to edit and go to the bottom. Oh man. Check. 
Chump change. I think I did it, man. I don't know. It says it's on. I have to figure it out for the next one. Don't worry. I'll do more of these. But uh, hey, Chris, thanks. Great first stream, man. Appreciate it, buddy. 1080 for the win. Go seven. That's what I started mining on. First time. Mine Zcash on that. GTX 970 was your first mining GPU, Ben, man. That's sick, dude. Chris, not GTX 970 as well. Great Atlas. Uh, first mine on a 1660 Super. Really good GPU to start mining on, man. Really efficient. A lot of you guys with uh, mining on these latest 30 series, welcome. Welcome to the mining scene. Stay strong. Diamond hands. ABN Menace Production. Uh, GTX 1066 gigabyte, man. That was a good GPU back in the day. I think a ton of people had so many of those. It's awesome. Uh, uh, Jason, any tips for using multiple ATX PSUs? Um, I have, so I'll tell you what I'm doing and then I'll tell you what you should be doing. <laughs> so I have on my 3070 rig, I have two ATX G, uh, PSUs. And, um, so first thing I guess I should say is ideally put the, the riser and the GPU on the same power supply. So you're not splitting them up. So maybe you put, if you're doing a six card rig, you have the motherboard on a power supply and then three GPUs and the risers on a power supply. And then you have another ATX power supply in that same rig doing the other three GPUs and the risers. Now, um, what you wanna do is power on the power supply that has not the motherboard on it, just the GPUs on it first, get those turn in and then turn on the mother uh, the power supply that's kind of just the motherboard and the rest of the GPU so they're recognized. Or you could just you know do what I do and just flip them on. Same time, it works fine. Uh, there is some adapters you can get, add to PSU. I have one, I bought it like three years ago. I've never used it, um, but that will allow one power supply to trigger the other one to turn on. So you can use that, just really a convenience factor, honestly, because you can just flip them both on manually and just let them run. Um, but I have two ATX PSUs on my 3070 rig right now. I have to switch one out. I have like three power, uh, server power supplies sitting around. I just haven't got around to it. Uh, let's see. What else? What else are you guys chatting about? He bought the scalp. It's miners. Ugh, sorry, dude. I know I've seen, uh, I've seen some miners getting some, paying some scalp prices on GPUs. I haven't done it. I haven't done it. Dude, you first, nonsense, you first mined on a Asus GTX 660 Ti 3 gigabyte in 2015. Wow, man. I hope you uh, hope you stayed with it and held on to some of those mining rewards. Yeah, guys, uh, hit the like button. Thanks, Chum Change. Uh, hit the like button if you haven't yet. And uh, I'm going a couple more minutes here. Gonna wrap this one up and do another one soon. Steven Price, thanks, dude. Appreciate uh, appreciate the kind words, man. I really do. If you guys aren't in my Discord yet, uh, please come join. Link is in the description of all my videos. It'll be on this one too. Uh, I do giveaways in there, which is hash power giveaways. I do a uh, minimum once a week. Call it Free Hash Friday, and um, which is not a term I came up with by myself. That's part of a mining space I was involved in when I got started, revived it. And you can enter in the giveaway bot and I'll pick a rig and I'll mine for 24 hours to your Ethereum address on whatever pool you like. Uh, along with that, I just do random giveaways. Maybe a couple GPUs will mine to you uh, for you know 12 hours or so. If I hit a sub count goal, then I'll mine for a while. Uh, I do some, if you contribute a lot in the discord you get a vip tag and i do special giveaways for hash power for that so i just like letting my gpus mine for somebody else for a little while so you guys can come join my discord hang out uh join those giveaways and um get some free hash coming your way yeah dude uh server power supplies are the way to go i still do the split i do like a 650 um you know cheap ATX PSU, and then I do the a server PSU on the same rig that does all the hefty, heavy lifting. 
Um, though you guys probably have seen Parallel Miner has that sweet, um, they have that sweet uh, breakout board that allows you to power everything. I can probably find it here. Yeah, this one allows you to power a whole rig. I think uh, I think every YouTuber, crypto YouTuber's done a video on this so far, except me, because I haven't bought one. Um, but this can you can power your entire system off a of server power supply using this board. So that's dope. So you can uh, server PSU is a way to go. Super cheap. I have a video on it. Just check it out. It's one I did a long time ago. All right, wrapping up here. Let's see. Okay. Uh, hi, thank you for your stream. I have a question. Can I create my build with six different NVIDIA GPUs? Yeah, you can. You can definitely mix up GPUs. It just gets a little annoying because overclocks are different for every card. So I uh, recommend... Well, my camera's dead. Thank you guys for coming out. And uh, <laughs> I'll get another one of these going, figure out why my camera died when it's plugged into my computer. And uh, you guys have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Peace.